this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Sunday chat today is all sorts. <laughs> the coconut husk, um, those of you that have been following the channel a while, um, often when I'm doing the kitchen time, repotting, I've got a big large green tray that all the rubbish goes in. Um, you know, old media, bits that I cut off, stuff like that. Um, so what I did was I cleaned that, gave it a good clean, and then put all the um, coconut husk in there and spread it out in a nice layer and that is outside in the sunshine at the moment and it's almost dry. Um, it's been out there about an hour, hour and a half maybe and it's almost dry so it just needed that sunshine on it. I'll go out and stir it up a bit <laughs> after I finish this and uh, you know get any damp layers from underneath up to the top get some more sun on it. So that's that. My mum's 90th birthday do was yesterday that went off incredibly well so um, a lot of those things go off well when the organizations in there which had absolutely nothing to me to do with me apart from thinking and agreeing it was a good idea in the first place but yeah we had lovely um, layered cake stands with some nice sandwiches on some cakes and of course the scones and strawberry jam and clotted cream um, and I found out something as well that I'm still debating this I'm still on the fence um, the scones and jam and cream are often thought of as a Devon thing you know when you when you go down to Devon for holidays you have scones and jam and cream and also on into Cornwall uh, if you go much further you fall in the sea but um, you know, those two counties are alongside each other and they have rivalries and apparently there's even a rivalry with whether you put the jam on first which is one county says jam followed by cream and in the other county it's cream with the jam on top which personally I can't see because <laughs> the the cream is wobbly and this you know and I got a feeling if you tried to spread the jam which is thick and sticky on top of the cream it would all go all over the place which is what you do when you try and take a bite out of it anyway it goes all over the place but it went well people mainly stayed at their tables so there wasn't too much mingling and you know blowing the social distancing um, the guy who runs the room that we were in um, did the bar area and stayed in his little area as well. Um, yeah, it all went off night and my mum was over the moon. Um, she was expecting something as it was a you know, major birthday but she didn't know what. So obviously they managed to keep that quiet, which I'm surprised, uh, especially amongst my family, rumour control. Yeah, so that was yesterday, that was good. Um, strangely enough, very tired when I got home. Um, but anyway, so that's that done now. Um, my car had to go in for its MOT. It failed on several things which were then fixed and um, eventually passed and that actually cost a fair bit of money this year because of the parts. Um, not so much labour, it was parts. Needed a new tailpipe on the exhaust, that was expensive. Um, and two new track rod ends, I think they were called, one each side. Again, the parts were quite expensive, the labour wasn't much. Um, new wiper blades, and quite honestly, all of those things are wear and tear. You know, it's a 17-year-old car at the end of the day. It's, you know, there's parts wear out on it. And it went straight through last year and cost me nothing. So I'm thinking of spreading that cost over two years. So that's what my motoring costs for the two-year period. So anyway, that's done for another year now, um, unless any more bits fall off. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that's, that's the new stuff, and today for the chat, I'd like to talk about things that you miss. I mean, there's obviously quite a lot of plants in here, and in some, in some areas, it's pretty cramped and squashed up. Um, I mean, I've managed to move a lot of things around now, so that a lot less plants are physically touching. And I've tried to concentrate on those that have either got or had scale. Obviously, my treatment program's running on. That's continuous. You know, I haven't, even, haven't got halfway through the first month yet. Um, some things have had their second treatment. And one, the mounts are coming round for their third, probably tomorrow or the day after. So there's no point in leaving it too long. If the gap gets too big, you've just wasted everything you've done before. Because you may actually allow an adult to be created with the scale 
create that hard shell and then it's going to have eggs and they're going to hatch out and you start the cycle again. So you mustn't leave the gap. Don't leave the gap too long. But when you're not watching your plants, um, well, let's do this one first. We've been watching the Miltonia Queen Anne thinking it's got a virus and I said it's going to get a chance and be allowed to bloom. I don't even need to wait for that bloom to open. There's just no point in waiting for that bloom to open. That, you can see it straight away, is serious colour break. It's supposed to be a uniform purple. It's got colour break all over it. So that's going out. It had its chance. It's a shame, and it is a hybrid, a Miltonia hybrid, that if I saw again, I might get it again. Um, but quite honestly, its colours are very similar to the um, Morleana that I've just got. So I'd have two incredibly similar ones. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it doesn't come up often. In fact, the only time I've seen that hybrid for sale is out of the nursery in um, wherever it was, down in the Mediterranean, where it came from, Madeira. Madeira, I'll get there in a minute. But I left my mounts into their third day and watered them with the sprayer last time. So they've actually been, they've now been five days since I physically picked them up and handled them. And this is the sort of thing that happens. I noticed this out of the corner of my eye this morning. And at the time I noticed, that bit was still attached. Why is it now not detached? Because out of the corner of my eye, I saw that discoloration. That browny, creamy colour. And I felt it and I thought, that's slightly soft. And then as my finger went down, I got to this bit here. That was a new growth. That failed completely. Yeah? So, and this bit here is soggy. That's a bacterial rot. Hence, it's been cut off. And the joint has had cinnamon pot on it. And I looked around the rest of the plant and I thought there's a bit of black on there. Um, that's just old, that's all right. Hang on, we got some black at the base of this pseudo bulb. That's actually okay. And then we come round here. Got a pseudo bulb that dropped a leaf about four or five days ago. So that's that. Now let's look at it. Look at the colour. You see that colour? It's very, very distinctive, or it is for me. It's a certain shade of brown that catches my eye, because I've been caught out by it so many times before. Now that is still firm, it's not soggy. Unfortunately, that pseudo bulb, this is an old pseudo bulb at the end of the day, um, that was the last one to bloom here. So that's an older pseudo bulb, and unfortunately, the latest new growth is coming out of it, and it's now got that coloration. So I'm going to attempt to use the secateurs without messing my hand up again to try and cut that out carefully without taking the new growth off. Actually, I think I might be able to... I'm just going to get my scissors. That's soft. Um, can I reach my scissors? Yes. Because I've gone through most of it with the secateurs, but if I try and use the secateurs to cut the rest off, I'm going to break that new growth. But you see, it's gone through quite a way now, so I can get my scissors to just snip the rest. And then the first thing we do is look at the, look at, look at the cut. There's brown on the inside of the plant, which means that down in there, there's brown. So it's highly likely that that bacterial rot has got into the rhizome. And if it has, that plant will collapse. But all I can do is, um, I brought my cinnamon in so that I could do it in here. I've cut the two offending pseudo bulbs off. My new growth is still there, but if it's got into the rhizome, the first part of this plant that will collapse will be that new growth, because it's soft tissue. It'll get in there first. But we'll just um, put a bit of cinnamon on the cut. 
I've already done the other one. But I wanted to leave this one to do on camera, basically. So we just dab a bit of cinnamon on the cut, which will dry it out. And it has healing properties. Um, and killing properties. It can actually deal with um, rots and things to a degree. I mean, it's not, it's not like a proper chemical. Sorry, I've got just some cinnamon on my hands now. I didn't think of that, did I? I didn't think, think to bring a towel in, did I? Um, anyway, so that's the sort of thing that happens when you're not watching your plants closely by picking them up and looking at them. And that colour just caught the corner of my eye, just luckily. And I may have saved the plant. I may not. I might not have been quick enough. If that's got into the rhizome, it'll just keep going. You know, there's nothing you can do about it once it's inside. And unfortunately, you're not going to like this, but that is the Cattleya Little Lemon Drops crossed with the Encyclia Vetalina that has the lovely flowers on. That I doubt if I would ever manage to get again. So, uh, Yes, so although it might all look, when I pan round the camera, it might all look sort of honey and roses in here, but it's not necessarily. Not everything's going fine in here. I've still got some stuff struggling. Um, if you remember, the new genus for this season was Renantheras, one of which was a hybrid with a species Vanda. Um, that's been thrown out. It dropped all of its leaves and although it had some little new growths coming out from the base, I'm not prepared to wait three or four years for those to get to blooming size and, and have a stick in a pot. So that went. Um, that was not a good plant when I got it. That had crown rot. It had something wrong with it. It just wasn't a good plant, which was a shame. That leaves me three, or does it? That doesn't look bad. We've got root tips, active, some down in the pot, roots down in the pot. We've grown a new leaf since I got it and it's now pushing out another one. It has a discoloured leaf at the base. But that's been like that ages and it hasn't changed. So that's growing, that, that's okay. That's the um, story eye, that one. I think that was the first one I got. And then we've got another one up here. Ooh, what is this one? Uh, this is calcium, which is a story I cross with something else, and I've forgotten what. Um, we got roots in the pot that are not necessarily growing that well, but they're there. But one of them has managed to come out of a hole, so something's growing in the pot. And we have these aerial roots with growing tips. This is what I call new root syndrome. I used to get it on the um, Nocturnum and I've had it on several other things. You cannot hydrate these. They will not lose their silver and go green. It's as though they've got like a shiny waxy coat on them. Incredibly difficult to hydrate these aerial roots. They just won't have it. Um, and unfortunately I can't sink the whole plant in water to get these in to soak for half an hour because all the bark floats out. <laughs> um, but there are roots in the pot, it does stay hydrated and again it, it's growing a good strong new leaf and it looks a healthy plant. Happy with that one. But, there's always a but, what about this one then? What's going wrong? It's pushed out a new root halfway up the plant this stick shows no signs of life down here, and this has got a poor root system. You know, these roots are in the pot, but they, they, they don't look alive to me. They look a bit sort of like these down in here. They don't look very happy at all. Um, the white roots are not growing, so that looks like the only active root. And it's dropped four leaves so far. Five? Any day now, that's going to be five, hotly followed by that one, that's six, and that one seven. It's dropping leaves faster than it can grow them, even though it is actually growing a new leaf. But why is it dropping the old ones? So we have to stop and think, why? Now this is Imshutiana. Why did I select the story eye? Because it's temperature tolerant and can be grown intermediate as opposed to warm. 
This one is supposed to be a bit temperature tolerant and we'll put up with it not in the warm section but not as good as the other one. So is this one just getting too cold at night and it's not happy? Is it not happy because it didn't have a very good root system and it still hasn't got one and so it can't support its leaves? Or is there fundamentally something wrong with it? You know, it's going to be very difficult to tell. And I might have to take a hell of a risk with this one and actually cut the top of the plant off, check the stem, <laughs> and get this root in some media so that it starts to hydrate and grows and put this in the shade with a lot of humidity around it to keep these leaves alive while that root grows and possibly makes a friend or two from higher up the plant. But that's not a happy plant. Yeah, so it's not all, like I say, not all honey and roses. Um, what else did I see? It's just like this plant up here. This is my um, Harvey Allen. And it will not grow. It's looked like that now for well over a year. It will not grow. But there's a sign of a new root just there. There's one little tiny new root, a little bit of white with a green tip. So maybe at long last it's coming back to life. So you sort of think, well, what could have, this was a strong, happy plant. What could have gone wrong with it? Well, what's going wrong with it at the moment is it's, although it's being treated, it's had scale. And we've recently, oh, there's actually, there's another root coming out the back there. So it looks like it might be coming back to life, um, but very slowly and painfully. Um, if it's got scale, we've recently found out that that Bois de Val scale, it's, when they bite, their saliva is toxic and actually destroys the cells around the area where the bites are. Well, as we've found out with anything that can, that can be toxic, some plants react rather badly and some don't take a lot of notice. If you think like with my um, systemic fungicides, the low level chemical, I had that um, professor, I forgot what her name is now, actually sent me an email saying that that is the one low level chemical that does more harm to plants than any other out of the systemics. That's the one that causes more trouble with the more delicate plants. So it affects some more than others. And you might use that systemic on a single plant as a trial and think, well, let's try it out on something I, you know, I don't mind if it goes down. And it works fine. It does the job. It does everything it says on the tin. You move over to that plant and you kill it. You just can't tell. So it may be that having had the scale bite into that, it's destroyed enough cells that the base of the plant just can't get going. But it does look like it's trying now. Oh goody. Sat like that for ages. That's been so close to being thrown out. But I can't find another one at the moment. If I could find a good one, I would um, buy it straight away and just dump that one. But it's a plant I'd like to have growing well again. It grew well for quite a few years and then it just suddenly went down. I'm not going to get it out, but the really large. Can I tip the tripod? No, I can turn the top, can't I? Just so that I can point. Think. I'm only going to point so you'll have to, you'll have to imagine. Up in there, hung up the back there, is my biggest twinkle and its first spike is growing. There. You may be able to see that, you may not. But yeah, that's the first twinkle spike to actually show up. Because we know that, you know, once you see the spike, the blooms are just round the corner. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Twinkle blooms and its parent. Uh, one of the parents, Soto Annan, are notoriously slow to actually open a flower. The first initial, I'll say, four to six inches of a spike seem to appear overnight. And then the progression is painfully slow. But it means the twinkles have started, because there are a few of those dotted around. There's three there, two big ones up there. Um, Oh, of course, one's, one's gone in the box. That was something else. Um, all the boxes went off except for one plant. There's one plant still here. So, Jen McCallum, if you're watching, you need to send me an email. I'm not posting the plant till I get a confirmed address. 
So there's only one plant left out of the plants to go that hasn't gone. And it's a small Phalaenopsis, the um, Sidera or Phalaenopsis japonica. So it's not a large plant, it's not in my way. I'm not worried if it never goes. But that person won the bid on it, it you know, they, they get first choice. I don't particularly want the plant, but I don't mind if it has to stay. It's not like it's one of the bigger ones. Um, what else? Oh, there was a cattleya I wanted to show you. I've seen a few cattleyas do this recently, and yet I don't remember it happening before. Now this one's got quite a few new growths on. It's got, um, there's three new growths here, one, two, three, all have got sheaths. But this one over here is way ahead of the rest. And it's got quite a few buds tucked down in that sheath. And the colour is, the, the, the frilly bit's trying to get out of the bud before the bud's even cleared the sheath. I've seen several do that recently. It's, it's as though it can't wait to open. Um, normally the buds clear the sheath and then the buds open. But that's the second cattleya recently where the frilly bit of the lip has come out of the bud quite a bit before the bud actually opens and shows the rest of the flower. But, um, well you can see what the colour is going to be. This was one I got at, um, I think this is, yeah it's an OID. I got this, in fact this is part of the Cattleya series I think, one of the two that I got. And this came from the um, Welsh Orchid Festival last year. Um, around this time actually, I think it was the first first or second week in September anyway, it's cancelled this year obviously. So. But yeah, so that will be the next uh, Cattleya to bloom, to actually produce blooms. But, you know, that's um, four new growths on there, so potentially, I don't know how long they last, I've forgotten. And it was in bloom when I got it, so I wouldn't know, would I? Um, but yeah, there's uh, potentially some good blooms to come on there. Talking of cattleyas, somebody asked me how my Gen Manii was doing, and that just happens to be one I can reach and get at without getting a load of stuff down. Um, uh, this being a cattleya species, does the typical thing, one growth a year, blooms, has a bit of a rest, and then does it all over again. But that's the latest growth up here. Massive sheath on this one, and no sign of the buds yet. Um, but it will bloom, uh, bloomed on the previous growth. And I've actually hacked the rhizome on this back here. Um, the trouble is, the section of the rhizome that's been left behind has only got one leaf. It's the oldest leaf, so that cutting the rhizome might not be successful. Um, we shall have to wait and see. But there's no sign of any movement on that back section yet. I don't see any eyes, I don't see any place where it could even think about growing. So it might not work this time round, but um, that back section of the plant I'd be quite happy to take off and throw away anyway. I mean, it's got a manky leaf and three leafless small pseudo bulbs, so it's not exactly doing a lot for the plant, is it? So, um, yeah, I mean, it progressed this way, so that was the first good leaf, as I'd call it. That was the next one, slightly smaller, before my time. Um, then this one, that was mine, and that decided, that was a light thing. Even though the direction of growth is that way, this one decided to peel round and come back here, which I was pleased about, because it sort of balanced the plant a bit better. That one then bloomed, and then the latest one has decided to, decided to continue the growth in the normal direction, but go skywards. So that's the next one, and that will, that will bloom down the road a bit. Um, with the species cattleyas, with a lot of them, you can almost predict when the buds are going to open, because it will be the same week as they opened the year before. They're almost that precise, within seven to ten days of the previous buds opening, the next year's buds will open, they're, they're pretty precise. Um, we're on about struggling things, weren't we? Uh, take this, why I haven't thrown this out, I don't know, but I'll give it a chance because it produced a new growth. We did quite a few um, Oncidium type, Alliance types out of pots and onto a mount because they weren't doing very well. That was the Nelly Isla that wasn't doing very well, the Red Velvet. It still isn't doing very well. And the new growth that it's growing still hasn't produced any new roots. So this has got next to no roots underneath it. Um, and shriveled pseudobulbs. It should go in the bin, quite honestly. 
but it's up there and it's not in my way. That's the criteria. If a plant's not doing very well and it's in my way, um, it doesn't stay in that state for long, it goes out the door. And I'm getting harsh, I really am. Um, not prepared to put up with non-performers unless I can see a specific reason why they're not performing and am capable of doing something about it. Um, but you have to bear in mind, you know, if you get warm growers and you haven't got a warm growing environment, you might have trouble. And it will be the nights that do the plants in. Um, last night was cold. Um, it went down to 16, I think, in here. Where's my gadget? What does that say? Uh, memory. See, this, this has got a memory, unlike me. Um, since this was last reset, it says max 22, so I must have not reset it that long ago. That's not working. Because that says the minimum is 21.9. Well, I haven't reset that today, and when I came out here this morning, that had 16 point something on it. And it's not setting the minimum. I know these are cheap and cheerful, but they are supposed to flip in work. I wonder why that's not working then. Well, let me reset it. And I'll have another look tomorrow and see if it records the minimum. If it's not going to record the minimum temperature, it's not worth leaving in here because that's the bit I'm after, really. Not what it is now, <laughs> what it has been, and, and you know, that's the bit I'm interested in. Yeah, so uh, not everything is rosy out here. Um, my soto anums that we split are um, starting to root. They are being kept very wet. <laughs> it, it's a bit worrying for somebody who's quite happy to let oncidium types become almost dry and then give them a good soak. Um, when they're actively growing, they shouldn't really dry out. But almost dries okay, that doesn't normally harm them. But it ruined my Soto Annum that I didn't realise was such a heavy drinker. And that did actually dry out a few times in the heat wave and it lost its roots, they frazzled. So it ended up almost rootless. And it was a massive plant, all blooming its head off. And without roots, it just bleh, <laughs> it just went. But it's coming back slowly but surely. I've got two, two good pieces and they are. Um, they live down there where they don't get quite so much light. They don't need it at the moment. I'm not trying to get them to bloom. But we do have new roots pushing out now. And for a typical looking Oncidium type, roots are incredibly fine. You know, they're literally almost hair-like. But the two pieces have got roots growing along with their new growths, so it, they should recover. And if they get a good root system and it starts to get going, it will grow like a weed again because it's an incredibly vigorous um, species. You normally don't get that sort of vigour unless it's a hybrid. It, it's, it, you know, it's the expression, hybrid vigour. You breed that vigour into it because the species haven't normally got it. Uh, what else have we got that's struggling? This over here. Uh, can I get that? Out. So it's got to come up over the top of all these blooms because I can't go through them. Now this one won't grow properly. There's something wrong with it. It just will not grow properly. I rescued it, but it's still not growing properly. This is the um, Encyclia cordigera, and okay, it's grown some new, or it's growing some new growths. There's one here, um, one here. Another one here, and there's a tiny one somewhere. Yeah, there's a tiny one coming out from right down there off of the end of that pseudo bulb. But, you know, given how big the old pseudo bulbs are, it's not growing properly. It won't get going. It's as though there's something inherently wrong inside the plant that's stopping it growing. I mean, there are a couple of obvious uh, contenders for being able to do that to a plant, but. It won't grow. Now there's a theory. How about this for a theory then? My holy clay pots are used for stuff that needs to a fast wet dry cycle that also has chunky roots. So it's mainly the catmull. 
almost entirely the Catlier Alliance that go in the holy clay pots. Now I'm holding this pot. Uh, this has been watered relatively recently so that it, there should be some dampness. Yeah, you can still see some dampness inside the pot. This pot is cold to the touch. That's evaporative cooling. I wonder if this just is basically up the warmer end of intermediate and I'm messing the roots up because they're getting cold. Possibility. But that's something you have to watch with clay pots. A lot of people deliberately put plants, things like Master Valias, in a clay pot to keep those roots cool. But there are some plants that don't want that. They don't want the roots at a totally different temperature to the rest of the plant. Um, that, those conditions that I've just said, you know, clay pot, uh, would not happen in the wild. That, that's just not going to happen where you get an ambient temperature, leaf temperature, bulb temperature, cane ten temperature that's just totally different to the root temperature. That doesn't happen. So it could be a condition that some plants don't like again. I don't know. It's a possibility though, isn't it? Uh, distinct possibility. Oh, you'll, um, do you know this nearly went in a box to somebody else. Um, the reason it was going to go to that particular somebody else is I know that somebody else will keep that mount hydrated, whereas I don't. I'm terrible. That's, that's dry at the moment. It's a bulb of film. It should not be dry. Um, but it's in bloom again. This is the one with the very, very delicate, tiny little blooms. Um, two. In theory, there were four new growths, and it blooms on the growth behind the new growth. We had a bloom a while ago, now we've got another two, so in theory there's another one to come, if it sticks to its uh, guns. But, um, yeah, I think I am. I'm, I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to try and make an effort to make sure. See, the thing is, unless we get the warm temperatures, like today it's a sunny day, it will get quite warm in here. 23 now, probably get up to 25. Um, but if we get cloudy days this time of year, even though it's only just the end of August, it won't get up much above 20 in here. Yeah? My mounts don't need water in every day when those temperatures are that low. They, they would end up starting to accumulate and become soggy if you kept watering them. But that one needs watering every day. It's dry. Well, I've actually got some. There's a tiny little dribble of water in the doodah down there. It was just enough to make that down. As I've got it in my hand. It seems silly to put it back knowing it's dry. Um, there's another mount that should never dry out as well. That's my um, young Victoria Regina. The tiny little one that I got. I mean, I've now got a much bigger plant that I got from Burnham's. But I'm still growing the other one on. You know, that will still become a blooming plant one day. But that would grow so much better if it was kept hydrated, which I fail to do quite frequently. And I know somebody who wouldn't fail to do that. Uh, but you've got to bear in mind, if you put plants on a mount and then put live moss on it, if you want that live moss to grow, it shouldn't stay dry for any length of time. And that's dry as well. But I mean, as soon as this video ends, I'm going round with the sprayer again. Now... I went round with the sprayer yesterday. In theory, these plants should not be dry. If I'd watered them properly, they wouldn't be. Not ones that have got quite a bit of moss on. Sprayer doesn't get it as wet as a proper watering. No, it just doesn't. Oh, I got a plant, I don't know whether I showed you this, I got another one of these from Lynn, Cuthbertsonii. I can't grow these. I doubt if it'll last. <laughs> Um, but at least this this is a um, oh, it's it's, a, it's an unusual cross. It's Sulawensii cross back with Cuthbertsonii, um, so it's an original Cuthbertsonii cross, then cross back with um, and it's cross back with bicolour. Um, lovely flower, and I'm reliably told by somebody who should know that Cuthbertsonii's, when in bloom, virtually stop growing, and blooms can last as much as six months. They really do last. Um, but while it's in bloom, they just slow right down as a plant and don't grow much, apparently. But this has got active roots coming out through the moss. 
it's okay. There is actually a new growth just starting, I can see, and another one that's maturing around here. So what I've done is I've stood that in a tray with moss in it. That will dramatically increase the um, humidity around it. It's a cloud forest dweller, cool dweller as well. Montane cold forest type thing. So high humidity, low temperatures, but air, air movement. That's its um, prime environment. Um, my other two, one of them's already been thrown out and the other one is only just hanging in there. Oh, I bumped my knee on a table leg yesterday and that's not happy. That'll have a bruise. So this one's not happy. Um, part of the plant is, well, it looks rotten to me. But over this side of the plant we've got some growth. We do have some greenery. So I'm still giving it a bit of a chance. Um, this is still on a mount down in there. And I put the mount flat and put live moss around it again for the humidity. Um, do you know I've got a feeling that might do better in a tiny little clay pot. Keep those roots cool. I'm not sure I've got one. I might put that down as a task. Ow! So there's a little tiny clay pot there, but that's not tiny. That's actually quite big for that size plant. I don't think I've got anything smaller than that. Up here. Just lurking up the back here. And there, those are bigger ones. Bigger still. That's probably the smallest one I've got. Yeah, looks like it. I mean, in that open basket in pure moss, that's not bad. But there's no cooling effect. If I could put that... I wonder if actually standing that open basket in that clay pot would cool it down. Probably wouldn't. Needs the media in contact with the clay, basically. But um, yeah, so there's a possibility that the cooling effect of the um, holy clay pots, unintentional, that's not why they were put in there, could affect some plants and stop their roots growing as well as they should. It's a possibility, isn't it? You know, you have to. When things are going well, you don't worry about it, but when they're not, you, you, you have to try and think of what it could be. And often it's not one thing, it's several. That messes you up. <laughs> what else? Um, this epidendrum won't grow. It is now, I say it won't. It wouldn't, but it has decided to now. Um, now a chunk of this went off to uh, Insa in his big box. Um, this is funny, I, don't, I gave a hint about traffic lights and some people thought, you haven't got any plants with green blooms on. <laughs> no, the traffic light was three colours and Insa said in one of his videos he's got two of the three colours he wants and hasn't got the other one. And this is the other one, it's orange. He had red and yellow, he wanted the orange, not green. Traffic lights was just the number three. Um, but this one recently has started to grow a bit. Um, you know, there's, there's a new growth here, there's a new growth here, and I think if I can make sure the scale don't come back on this, it might get going again. And there's another one inside here as well. But the whole plant just went down. Um, it's, almost, it's almost as though it bloomed its head off, another one of those. Um, I keep thinking, because I've got kikis, got one up here with roots, another one here with roots, a root. Um, I'm thinking that I might actually take those kikis off and plant them and see if I can get a new plant growing from scratch with it with the roots in the media. Um, well, it's got roots now. It's not growing well though. It's not performing. It says, you know, these 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 are good strong growers under normal circumstances, epidendrums, the radicans type, um, they normally grow well and they're not difficult. <laughs> yeah, mine is, but they're not normally. So anyway, when you're looking around your plants, look at them because you can miss things. And if you miss things like I missed on that cat there, um, another couple of days that plant would probably be gone because part of that bacterial rot was soft. Um, 
if I'd broken the skin on the outside of that area, liquid would have come out. Yeah, it's, when it gets like that, it's gone, and it's infected every everything around it. All the, every tissue in close proximity has got that infection on it, um, and it works fast. You've got to be quick. There was another thing somebody asked about, and it, I know. Ah, that. Somebody said, how's your tortill doing, or tortilli? And quite honestly, it's doing quite well. This year's two growths have pushed on nicely. Um, the main plant didn't grow. This was from Alberto in Italy. When he gave up his collection, he sent me a piece. And um, the piece he sent died. But the two kikis are here. One here, one here. And they grew, this was their first growth as a kiki, and that pushed on quite nicely. But this, this year's two growths are pushing on very nicely. Um, it's possible we might get a flower or two on there next year. They're still growing. Well, that might be the terminal leaf. It's difficult to tell. Um, it probably is. If a leaf on a dendrobium cane appears to be full size and there is no sign of the next leaf coming the chances are that's the last leaf it's ever going to grow. Um, they still extend in length a little bit they still carry on putting on width and length a bit but you don't get any more new leaves so that could be the size they're going to get this year but that's not bad I mean I'm pleased with those two growths. So that's that. <coughs> <coughs> so that's coming on and, um, oh, somebody said, why haven't we got Kuniko blooms, those lovely purple clusters? Well, we haven't. It's having a rest. <laughs> um, it's growing. Um, canes are growing. Um, canes are doing quite well. Um, and this is another one that technically grows kikis as well as canes, because if you take that big, strong cane there, it starts there. It's halfway up this one. Yeah, so technically that's a kiki, but that's how this grows. The base of the plant is here. It's got another base here, which was like an extension, you know, that started a group of kikis. And that's got a cane still growing on it. But basically we've got no buds on here at the moment, nothing. And I think what it is, is the older leafless canes that have been blooming so well since I got it, have actually done all they're ever going to do now. So we're waiting for, you know, canes that have been grown since to actually reach blooming size, which is normally, I suspect, this one and this one will be the next two to bloom because they're dropping their leaves, slowly but surely. They're not totally leafless yet, but they will be. So I suspect that this one here, this one and this one will be the next set to start blooming. And you get quite a few clusters per cane. It's not just one. Um, not all at once, um, it, but it tends to bloom over quite a long period on those leafless canes. And at the moment, I haven't got any new ones that are leafless. This is the closest, this one. Just got one leaf hanging on in there. Uh, right. Um, this is a bit of a success rather than a failure. It's been a failure for over two years and I only keep it because I love the blooms. But again, that just would not grow in a pot. Failed miserably to grow in a pot. So I thought, right, you can go on them out and see what you can do. Well, what it did was it pushed out this growth on the end. And I thought that's quite nice. But then halfway back round the back of the plant, it pushed out quite a strong new growth, this one. Yeah, so that gave me two, and it's just started a third, so it's growing. And actually there's a fourth, there's another little one there, all coming out of the old part of the plant. Yeah, I mean that's quite an old bulb there, um, small bulb as well, with new growth there. That's a fairly old bulb, biggest one it's got, that's got a new growth, and the one round the back is coming out of the same bulb. And then this one out here has got a new growth. So we've actually got four new growths. And that hasn't grown anything for years. That one I'll do a pop-up for because the picture won't do it justice. It's one of those you have to see. It's an unusual colour combination for an Oncidium Alliance type. The shape 
is typical of an Oncidium Alliance type um, with um, Odontoglossum in it, but the colours are unusual and that's what I like about it. It's not your typical coloration. So that's that. And I think that will do for today. As I say, I'm going to whiz around with the sprayer. This one I can't keep. Um, it's had its chance. Um, new growths haven't grown properly. The leaves have, haven't developed. You know, I mean, that new growth has stopped growing. It's not growing. It always had the hallmarks of being virused. And I thought, we'll wait for the blooms to open. But I don't need that to fully open. I can peel these sepals back, they are badly discoloured. It's supposed to be quite a uniform colour and it's got patches, blotches and it won't grow properly. Even though it pushed out four new growths, they didn't grow properly. You know, it's all very well, the numbers are not the thing. It's the quality and it ain't there, so that's going to have to go. And hopefully my little uh, Catlatonia, why not, cross, will pull up and that bacterial infection will have been stopped. Um, even if the new growth that was growing out of the cane I've just, the bulb I've just cut off, actually fails, if it didn't, if the infection hasn't got into the rhizome, it will push another new growth out from somewhere. It'll find a place. Uh, it's always been a reasonable grower, that one. So, we shall wait and see. But um, watch your plants, and if you are a sprayer person, and you do it repeatedly, take a day off now and again, and do it manually, and pick each plant up and have a good look. Turn it round, have a look round the back, look at it from the top, you check the base, give it a look over. It's easy to miss things with a sprayer, which I'm now going to go round with. <laughs> I've still got water in it left over from yesterday. Right. See you next time. No real subject for today. It's just a chat about certain plants, plus some requests to look at certain plants. Have I still got them? That sort of thing. Have you still got that so-and-so? Yes. Because um, we haven't seen it for a long time. Probably. <laughs> Talking of which, the other... Um, this is the other Victoria Regina. Uh, and it's growing. You know, this cane has pushed on, this was a tiny little bit of green, the only sign of life on it for a while. Um, it has pushed out some roots up through the moss, not many, but the fact that they start at the base and go up through the moss, they now get hydrated better, yeah, they're not bare rooted. And this cane is still growing. It's still pushing a new leaf out from the centre. It's growing. So it's getting there. Um, it's only got one other cane, so there's no way it's going to bloom at that size. But if you see that, you know, and then look at what I bought at Burnham's, the difference in what we're looking at. That's a blooming size plant, you know, when they put the adverts on the flipping internet. You know, that's that big, not that big, yeah? The canes are that thick, not that thick, yeah? And it's got a, a leaved cane. Um, the leaves on this cane will drop. Um, they're not going to stay forever. And I'm looking for a new growth, but I might not get one till next year. But what I have got is new roots pushing out. And they're lovely because they've got yellow tips. You, can, you might just be able to see them, but there are new roots growing. So I could currently make the decision, do I leave it in its pot or do I mount it? New roots growing. Now's the time. Yeah. Possibly let them get a little bit longer than they are at the moment. Because um, they're not, not exactly fragile. But yeah, that's. I know that's a blooming sized plant. I've seen the plant it came off of, and those canes are about the same size as all the other canes that I've seen blooming. You know, the mother plant, um, that's, I think, one of the mother plants was sacrificed and split into lots of pieces. Um, to sell on. Um, but the mother plants are huge, you know, the base of them is, is sort of like this, you know, they've got 20, 30 canes on. And when they're in bloom they are a spectacle because there's lots of them and they're all in bloom together and they're all set up as like a row. Yeah, so it's quite a spectacle. Um, 
that display is on one of my videos. So if you search in on my videos, if those of you who don't, I'm sure a lot of people just don't use YouTube, the, the facilities. If you get to my home page, you get banner headings across the top. Home, videos, playlists, blah, 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 as, as he headings. Yeah? If you click on videos, the display underneath changes and it's just videos, nothing else. Yeah? And then there's a little search at the end. So you can search my videos. Once you're on the home page and you've gone to there, you can just hit search. And if you put Burnham's in, in theory, you should get all of my videos up that have got the word Burnham's in the title. And one of those has got a film clip of <laughs> the massive display. Here, you have to watch them all now, aren't you? <laughs> right, I'm gonna go and I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Enjoy your plants. And I'll add it on the end for those of you who are still here. If you're watching and you're not subscribed, please think about doing so. It'll help me a lot. I am getting close to that magic 10,000, slowly but surely. Um, yeah, so see you next time. Thank you.